Welcome in, it's the Positively Petland Show, AM 800 KXIC. What a week we've had to take the dog out for a walk. Take your cat out for a walk, maybe? Or uh, did the cat take you for a walk? Yes. I still tease my wife about, uh, we had a cat, Chloe, a black cat. Just a really wonderful, uh, loving cat. A uh, little well, on the chunky side. But uh, she was determined to take her out for a walk. So we went outside, and she put this little leash or harness on her, and we went out to the driveway, and she took about two steps and then just rolled over on her back. <laughs> and <laughs> that was as far as we got. She didn't want to go anywhere. So her that way. We yeah, have to drag her if we, I mean, that's the only way we can get her to go. So we just brought her back inside. So no exercise for her. But I have seen people walk cats before. I saw someone down. Town recently with a cat on their shoulder walking around downtown. <laughs> and that's how you take care of Yeah, so. And uh, I know bunnies, uh, they have, you can get harnesses for those uh, too. And that's the breed of the week this week, right? The breed of the week is Is the bunny the, the right pet for you? All right. So we'll talk about that. We have an amazing pet story with a local tie in. So we'll tell you about that as well. Ron's going to tell us a little bit about food ingredients. And on that, and maybe compare some brands a little bit. Take yeah. a look at what's in our food, and then anything else on the. Those are, those are the three top the main topics. Did you say microchip? Uh, no, that's going to be tied into the amazing pet story too. So we'll talk microchips a little bit too. So a lot of those topics to come here on Kicks. I see. Uh, how are things at the store, Ron? Uh, warming temperatures. It's it's uh it's always fun to be around in the store in springtime. Just. Everybody's all bubbly because it's, you know, oh, oh, yeah, and, you know, all ideas of, I want to get this, I want to do that. So it's yeah. fun time. Lots of puppies there at the pet store. So stop by right off Lower Muscatine, right across from the uh, newly called Iowa City Marketplace, formerly the Sycamore Mall. And they're happy to talk to you. You guys are open at 10 o'clock each morning, except for Sundays, right? Sundays were open from noon until 6, and then uh, Mondays through Saturdays were open to from. 10 a.m. till 9 p.m. But open at noon today on Sunday. And that's PetlandIowaCity.com. And then also you have uh, $5 nail trims, which are super popular, I know. Yes. And for the listeners of this show, as you walk into the store, just notice there is a sign that we have that I'm slow to update. I'll totally acknowledge that. But look at the sign and it says, you can't be a $5 that's nail true. trim. And that is a quote from jay that's right well it's not and it was, and it was a quote from a customer that's right that's what i heard and it's the truth it's not just uh, me promoting the the pet store it's the fact that as i was walking in uh because we frequent i we like to go there and just uh, play with the pops and get some uh you know items for our pets but as i was walking in the man next to was coming out with his dog saying literally said wow you can't beat five dollar nail trims and i was thinking that's that is so true too because just five bucks you guys do the work and sometimes I remember when we had a dog. Our dog hated that, so um, it was good, good, good chance to for just five bucks. They'll do it for you. And then, of course, you also have some other great things you like to promote. Of course, you're over thousands of items you have there at the store. But then you also have buy ten get one free of your dog foods, right? Dog and cat. And cat yeah, we like it for you. You don't have to be cutting or saving or anything like that. And so it's a really easy program to to sign up for. And it's all competitively priced on top of that. So you, it's a win win. And this show available via podcast at kxic.com. If you ever miss a show, just go to our website, click the podcast page, and you can listen into this show. We always talk about a wide variety of topics. Today we are going to talk a little bit about bunnies. So we'll get there in just a little bit. But first, we'll bring in. Big voice guy. Here he is, big voice guy. Good to see you. It's time for the amazing pet story of the week. Oh, just holding a carrot. Holding a carrot for the bunny. That's right. He's got some sunglasses on. Looking good there, big voice guy. We'll get to the bunnies here. What a sight. In just a little, a little bit. That's right. The amazing pet story of the week. This week does have a tie-in. I thought it was pretty cool. I always try and find an Iowa tie-in. Uh, difficult sometimes, but this one is a pretty cool story. Out of uh, It's a dog that went missing in 2011 and it was in New Orleans. Uh, four, this is four years ago in 2011. The Lambert family had a little Yorkie named Sam. Now this dog went missing and uh, from the yard. And then, you know, the family at that point, it's sad, but 
they moved on. They didn't know where the dog was at. They never had any indication of where the dog ended up. We don't know how it ended up here in Cedar Rapids, but it ended up in Cedar Rapids. And Wait, where did they originally lose it? New Orleans. New Orleans. Okay. Yeah. So there's somehow that that dog um, ended up here after uh, after that many years too. For so four years later, the dog shows up on the city's northeast side. They scan. They mm. get the microchip. So it got. Up. So did it get lost again? Uh, yes, it must have. Okay. And so, and they, it really wasn't in very good shape when they found it. It was matted, dirty, a skin rash, needed some dental work. <laughs> <It's> so, like, <laughs> poor little guy. Yeah, brings it out of the south, He's yeah. Ten years old, and he. Oh, yeah. So um, now you know they they. But when they scanned him, it shows New Orleans. So they okay. Let's well, contact this family. They contact the family. The family says that they cried when they found out. Of course, they thought she was gone. And so then word gets out, and I thought this was a great job by a, a big company that d didn't have to do this, but United Airlines offered a first-class ticket to escort Sam to New Orleans. And so United Airlines steps up. They got they received word of the story, and then they gave Sam uh, they gave a ticket to Johnson, uh, the woman here, um, uh, Danielle Johnson. They gave a ticket to her to go to escort to New Orleans. And so uh, they they use this as a very good example of the importance of microchips. So first of all, congratulations to the family. They have their family member back. Sam was given to their oldest daughter for a birthday present. Uh, you know, now she's older and uh, now has her dog back, which is great. So it's a feel good story. The fact that they got her back, uh, they have these microchipping events that that you hear about. But when you get a dog from Petland, you guys have the microchips. So I thought maybe you could speak to well, the. Can we lead off with that, or sure. do you need to take a break? Or let's anything? talk. Yeah, let's talk about that, and then we'll take a break. So we'll talk a little bit about microchips now. Some things that I wanted to point out in this story. One is is a microchip. You know, gosh, that is a great story of protecting your pet. Um, there was a little lag time, and we can talk about why was there a lag time and and all that kind of stuff, but. Microchipping your pet is a benefit to you and your pet. Uh, if a shelter, uh, police department, fire department, uh, veterinarian, whoever uh, this gets relinquished to, um, the first thing they do is scan the pet because collars and tags and all that kind of stuff tend to get lost in the process. And just talk with your local animal shelter and you'll, they'll, confirm that when the dogs come in uh, or the cats come in they just don't tend to have the tags that you normally you originally put on there and how they get off you know it's whether they pull it off or you know get it caught on something and get it taken off so the microchip is the one thing that you can have your dog and it's just right below the skin and they typically put it right between the shoulder blade area and so when they come in, the veterinarians and the shelters and all that they get the scanner out and they scan that really quickly Every chip has a unique number, uh, so it's like a social security number uh, for your pet, cat or dog. And then they can go to a national database, and that's what you're hearing in this case. They, this dog was not <laughs> in its original town, New Orleans, and it was here in Iowa City. So somebody must have lost the dog again. That's what happened. The first time it got lost, apparently that family did not you know, that found the dog, didn't bring it to any place. And they just claimed it as their own. Mm. Uh, so next time it got lost, somebody was diligent and said, hey, I'm going to bring this to the shelter or my veterinarian or the police department. They scan it. Uh, then you can go look in the national database and say, whose dog is this if there is a chip? And so that's what happened in here. And that's how they found out, oh, it's from New Orleans. And they then contacted that customer with with that national database. You can keep your number uh, at, uh, current. You can call it up, you know, and say, "Hey, my chain, you know, my address has changed, and all that." Uh, with the program that Petland uses, you you can do that with at no cost to you. So you can always keep it current, and you're not going to have to you know shell out more money or anything like that. And so the family got it back because they registered that microchip on the national database and therefore got the puppy back. And so that's, I just wanted to put a little bit more to the story. And now bottom line, what do you need to do for your pet right now? Uh, if you got it from Petland, the benefit is, is you've got a microchip that's registered on the national database for a lifetime. There is no uh, monthly, yearly, or anything fee on that. There's no cha uh, change fees or anything like that. 
And so you can move and, and change that address and uh, get it updated and all that kind of stuff. If you've uh, gotten your pet microchipped, but you're like going and scratching your head, I don't know, I, I got it registered. But if you yourself did not register it to the national database, almost guaranteed it's not. Um, it's something that when you go to a veterinarian or let's say the shelter did it or like these low cost uh, uh, microchip events, chances are all they did was put it in, they inserted the chip, it's through a, like almost a vaccination, um, and they handed you, and whether you remember it or not, a registration form. And most people do not fill out that registration form. So when Wendy and I bought the store, we actually looked at that because we, this is over 10 years ago now, uh, they were just handing that to the customer and saying, here, register your dog and all that. And they were, I, I called them up and I said, what's the chances of them registering the dog? And it was 20, less than 20% chance. Wow. And I went, hey, that chip is useless unless you uh, register that. So in our store, we then made the policy, every dog, cat, that is, and all of them are microchipped. We register them before that customer even walks out the door uh, to the national database. They get an email before they walk out the door that says, you're registered in the national database. This is how to do things. And we register it for a lifetime. So there's no fees. If you did get your dog microchipped at a low cost event or with your veterinarian, just know that the chances are it didn't get registered in the national database. If you need help with that, you can actually come into Petland. We will get it registered in the national database for you. It's a very low cost fee that we're going to charge you for that. Um, if you do it through, uh, some of the other organizations, you're going to spend uh, well over $300 for the life of the pet. I can easily, we do that for you for under 50 bucks for, and it's a lifetime registration for your dog or cat. So if you need help with that, come into our store and we'll help you with that. But you can also go back to the chip manufacturer or the veterinarian and say, hey, how do I do that again? And I'll educate you on that. So Microchipping is half the solution, but it by no means protects your dog. You have to have it registered in the national database for it to be a long-term protection for you, your family, and that dog or cat. Uh, so if you ever move away or, or move out of the town that you got it in, you're still protected. That's good peace of mind, uh, certainly because the dogs uh, and cats become your family members. You want to protect them, but also... Uh, which is unfortunate. I, I've read some story, and I know we briefly talked about it on a show before. There's this new trend called dog flipping, and people are stealing dogs from backyards and then trying to sell them on, you know, social media sites or Craigslist or whatever else. And then, um, you know, you, you don't know if your dog is, is gets stolen from your house or just runs away. But the, to be able to have a way to get that information back you is can, important. So. This is a, you can prove it in the court of law with a microchip so you know if that unfortunate event happens with you you can in the future prove that this is your dog because the microchip was originally registered in your name that's no, he said, he said, no, so that's good no. good good advice from ron there with Pelham. we come back we're going to talk about dog food ingredients talk a little bit about that we will also have the bunny and talk about what it takes uh, and if the bunny's right for you it's our breed of the week it's all coming up here on KXIC. This is the Positive Petland Show. Store opens up at noon today. This is the recorded show. It's in the 9 o'clock hour on Sundays. So in a couple hours, Petland will be open for you to stop by from noon till 6, 6 o'clock on Sundays. And then 10 o'clock, it opens up uh, the other days of the week. Stop by and say hi to Ron. Say hi to all the great folks at Petland. And we'll be back with more after this. AM 800 KXIC. <laughs>
Welcome back. It's the Positively Thailand Show, AM 800 KXIC. I'm Jay Capron, KXIC Morning Host. We have Ron Stalzer here, owner of Petland of Iowa City. First segment, we talked a bit about the amazing pet story of the week. Sam, happy to be back home in New Orleans after his found in Cedar Rapids. Thanks to the microchip. We talked about the value of the microchip and about uh, Ron's great store there on the War Muscatine. Stop by, opens up at noon today. Podcast available of this show at kxic.com. And so each week we have a different breed. Normally it is a dog. We did do cats once uh, when we brought them into the studio. Well, we reviewed the history. Oh, we need to do that they, one again. They that climbed was all over the, uh, the walls. Oh, we had cats in the studio. Yeah. Is that, that was something I never thought of before because the dogs, you know, they cause a little bit of problems with the wire sometimes and then they poop and, you know, sometimes some issues with the cats. If you don't know about our studio, we have carpeted walls here in the studio. <laughs> it was wall. hilarious. I was pulling them off. I mean, they're going up the wall. I'm trying to call, you know, that was a that fun was, show. Oh, that was fun. But today we're going a little off the beaten path here with the bunny and uh, talk about the bunny if it's right for you. Uh, you just recently received some some uh, bunnies from the guy you work with, Donnie, yep. you said, right? Yep. We have a local breeder that we work with here. And, and bunnies are a fun pet to have. Uh, if are you are you that family that says you know I don't know you know I wanted a dog again but you know, I'm not sure if that's right for us right now uh, it's something a little easier something to expose my child to and and see how this goes or you know a trial run type thing and then maybe later on you get to do another pet whether it's a dog a cat a reptile uh, or a fish or whatever it is and you, the bunny I think is a really fun pet to have for a couple of reasons. What I like about bunnies is, uh, yeah, just they're cute, they're they're furry, they're soft. Uh, kids love them. Uh, the imagination within your child is just really fun and abundant on on what the bunny's going to be like and all that. And so then they get to experience it real life. Uh, for you, it is a lower maintenance type pet where a dog you're you're gonna have to you know go for the walks and do the potty training and all the different aspects of it with a bunny um you can do actually some of those things um but they're you know in the cage you know at night and during the day and you take them out they're a little easier to maintain and everything so we'll talk a little bit about that um basic things uh when you want to think about hey what does my bunny need think about what do they need when they're out in the wild? Uh, what do they do when they're out in the wild? And you you emulate that back in your home. So one of the things that bunnies do when they're hopping around and, and enjoying you know the life and all that kind of stuff, and I just saw one running around my yard uh, two days ago when we pulled in, and it, it was a bun it was a bunny. It was hilarious because they just jump all over the place. But as soon as we pulled in, it went to an alert status, you know, it stopped and said, do you really see me? You know, kind of a thing. <laughs> um, and then it quickly dove under some bushes. And that is a protective thing. It's also a stress reliever for that bunny. And so it's their normal behavior when they feel frightened, threatened, um, not quite sure what this thing, you know, what's happening right now. They like to go under things. Uh, think of birds of prey, you know, when they're above the the bunny or a small animal, uh, they want to get away. They don't want to be eaten. And so they go under things to protect themselves. So that's the first thing you want to have and know about with your bunny at home is have a hideout within their habitat. And so there's plenty of different hideouts for bunnies where they can just, you know, they look like little igloos and stuff like that, where they just jump into um, if they feel threatened or anything like that. And that's their way of relieving stress. Oh, I'm in protection. I can, you know, relax a little bit under here and all that kind of stuff. I always teach our children uh, about when, when they have, this would be like a kennel for a dog could be used in the same way. Hey, uh, kids, when the bunny goes into the hideout, into the little house, don't just go in there and open up the house and grab the bunny. You want the house to be a reliever, a stress reliever for the bunny so that if it feels threatened, it will go in there. Um, I know that as parents, we're going to open that house from time to time just to get the bunny out. That's okay if you do it from time to time. But for the most part, let them know that that's their little uh, house. Hey, I, I just want to break right now. I'm going to go into my house kind of a thing. So a hideout is one of the first things that you want to give your bunny. 
uh, nutrition. Uh, when you watch those bunnies out in the yard, what are they doing? They're eating the dandelions, they're eating the grasses and all that kind of stuff. Um, some of the best things for them to eat is hay. And especially a bunny that is less than six months old, alfalfa is higher in nutrients for them. Uh, bunnies less than uh, six months of age, we always recommend get the alfalfa so that they have good nutrition for them to grow. Uh, general rule of thumb, re uh, realize grasses uh, are, you know, the oat hays and the alfalfas and the timothy hays um, are the, generally their nutrition, but we also buy some pellets uh, for them which is mostly Timothy hay and all that kind of stuff, but it's very condensed, it's very nutrients dense. Uh, what you wanna do to prevent your bunny from being obese, uh, which is a common issue with uh, bunnies and small animals at home, they tend to get obese because we're feeding them, we're overfeeding them uh, what, they, what they need. So for a bunny and a guinea pig, what you wanna do is 75% of their volume is grasses, literally, you know, in a natural form, it's just cut, you know, kind of thing. So you buy the package of Timothy hay, or the, or if they're younger than six months, it's alfalfa, and you put that hay in there. Uh, you also have a little bowl of the pellets. Uh, if you overfeed on the pellets, you just end up getting a fat bunny or a fat <laughs> guinea pig, which, you know, is not the end of the world or anything. That's the way, I think the way most of us did it back in the day. My guinea pig, I always say, was the biggest guinea pig in the world because we didn't know better. Nobody told us that we we're supposed to feed them natural grasses. And so we just fed them the pellets and our guinea pig said, thank you, <laughs> I love this stuff. And just kept on eating and eating and eating. When you put the natural grasses in there, that takes volume up in their belly so they don't eat as much. And so then they can uh, make their weight more appropriate when you have an abundance of grasses in there to fill their belly. They also like that even more than the pellets. Um, it just must taste better. And realize there is different grades of hays. Um, there are some brands that are out there that you'll find in the the uh, you know big box stores and all that kind of stuff, and that tends to be the ends of the hays. And there's a lot of dust in there and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we use a product. Uh, we have all a really good variety uh, within our store of the different hays. Um, one of the brands that we brought in is called Oxbow. Um, really interesting. Uh, what we found out is if you feed oxbow, which is a higher quality hay, it's, it's going to be fresher and all that kind of stuff. They really like it. it to the point of if you switch back to some of the cheaper ones, they'll kind of snub their nose at you. <laughs> and it's interesting. So, you, so the bunny can tell the different qualities of hay that's out there. And they tend to, you know, they go towards the higher quality haze that are better for them. So it's a good thing. Um, so haze is 75% of what they are going to eat. And then 25% uh, is pellets. Uh, you can get some treats for them if you're into the training aspect of things. Uh, you can look at, uh, there's yogurt drops and all sorts of stuff. And you literally can train your bunny to, you know, come when you, you say your, you know, the word for, you know, come here or whatever it is. Uh, you can train them in different ways with treats uh, as an incentive, and they'll learn that over time. You can also potty train bunnies and uh, guinea pigs, and you just need to get a litter box, put some litter in there, uh, and we'll talk about that in a little bit here, uh, what litter means, and then put it in the corners that they tend to go potty in, and it will change, especially at the beginning. So you can buy multiple litter boxes or just buy one and put it in the corner that they're uh, favoring right now and not realize it's going to change. So then put it into that corner. Uh, you can incentivize them to potty in, in that corner by putting a little bit of that hay. Just put a little sprig of it over in the litter box and they tend to poop when they eat. And so that's a incentive for them to, to learn to poop and pee and all that kind of stuff in that corner where the hay is that they're just eating a little sprig of. You don't have to put all of it in there. Just put a little bit in there and they'll, they'll figure that out. So, so that's a little bit about the nutritional aspects of things. The, uh, the litter that we brought up, it depends. What I go by on litter is, is how are you as far as sensitive to smells? 
there are the classic wood chips, which are probably the worst as far as odor removing and eliminating. They do fine. I mean, they worked for us here for me. It's 30, 40 years ago. Um, we, they still are abundant out there. The one thing you want to uh, steer away from is cedar. Cedar is going to be a different color. It's going to be a more reddish color. Stay away from cedar. It does have some toxins uh, in it that they've identified over the years. So you, it's, for the most part, I don't see cedar in uh, wood chips anymore. When you go to the big box stores, you will see see it in there still so they haven't caught on to it here in 20 years and they're still uh, promoting it just realize you can literally kill your, your bunny uh, guinea pig or, or your small animal with those cedar chips even if it's just a minor amount in there they're putting probably that cedar in there for a scent or something like that but it's not good for the pet so just eliminate that, that out of there then you can go up to uh, paper-based uh, litters that are in there uh, that's the next thing and there's fluffy ones and there's different colors and so that's fun for the kids uh, they generally they do a great job of absorbency uh, and so it's a little it's a lot better in that way so you don't have as much uh, 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 liquid from the urine you know hanging around and all that kind of stuff uh, then you can get into some higher quality stuff and really you're not spending any more money for it at this point it's paper based but it's pelletized and it usually has some odor removing qualities to it like baking soda carbon things like that that are known to absorb the urine and descent that poop that they're uh, pooping out and everything um you can e even use that then as your litter uh, things have changed in our store a little bit we're actually uh, uh when you come in you look for the gray pelletized product in the litter it actually has cats on it because uh it's also used as a cat litter for hmm. the same reason but we have found it is one of the best products to use for odor remover so if you're sensitive to smells uh, switch over to that we've got plenty of it in our store it's what we use in our litter boxes and uh, mice and rats tend to be the stinkiest of all and so we use it in there as well and it found over the years that it just crushes everything that's out there um, as far as odor remover and just uh, um, absorbing moistures and stuff like that so uh, so that would be used as a litter and just look for it in our aisles it's uh, in our small animal aisle you will see a cat on it uh, but it is a gray palletized paper product with carbon and baking soda and all that kind of stuff so it does a good job there um, so those and you can even use that as your general bedding with for your bunny and so it'll do a, a great job all around don't worry that you're using the same product in your litter box as you are for the bedding the bunnies are more interested in the location than what's in that location. So it's a little bit about uh, litter training. We talked a little bit about uh, uh, training your bunny to do different things. You can train them to roll over and all sorts of things over time. Uh, it all depends on how much interaction you have uh, with that bunny. Uh, the water. Uh, the, it's basically, you know, all you're going to have is a water bowl and or a, uh, a bottle that they can go up to and, and uh manipulate the little ball that's on the end of the spigot and then they get the water the only thing that i have for that uh, that i would recommend is again if you're sensitive sensitive to smells realize there is an odor removing product that you, you can add in a small amount and will actually reduce the odor of the poop and the urine so if you're sensitive to smells again that is an outstanding product to use and you're just using a little bit uh, in the water so that they get it continuous throughout throughout the day and it does a great job of eliminating those odors i've had uh some moms out there that said hey i love everything about this guinea pig this rabbit or this ferret and they said but that smell ferrets i hear a lot about yeah they have a little scent gland in them and so some people are real sensitive to those you put this odor removing product in there and you have fixed the problem you know as far as that goes so it's a really uh, great product that works really really well um, so that's a little bit about the water and i'm thinking if there's anything else there i'm you know, the, the habitat, I guess overall, the habitat that you choose, realize that they're going to spend a lot of time in this habitat. And remember how we talked about um, uh, hideouts, so it's kind of their igloo home. We talked about 
bowls. We talk, you know, food bowls and water bowls and water bottles. Uh, hey, we've got that hay in there. Hey, they have hey, we got they hay. Even mean that one. Um, you're going to have some kind of a device to hold the hay together. Really, there's a lot of things in that habitat. So when you choose the habitat and you're looking at this, you know, this empty habitat, realize you're going to fill it up with stuff. So I always recommend get the biggest one. Um, you're going to love it. Your your bunny or guinea pig is going to love it as well. Because once you put all these items in there and you find that you got this too small a one, because there's no room for the pet after you put all these in there. <laughs> um, that's a thing to consider. So we always recommend go, go with the larger cage. And literally, you're going to spend, what, $10, $15 more for the, the bigger cage. That's it. And, and for the life of that pet, that's going to be a great investment for both. Um, we have a really nice cage set up in our uh, store at Petland, Iowa City, that not only do you get the cage and you can get the large cage for your bunny, but it's going to have a, a, a platform in it so that there's more surface area that they can run around. The platform underneath it becomes the hideout. So now you're making really good use of the area within the cage. Uh, it comes with a food dish right on the platform. So, okay, now we're combining things together. So it's, I love the cage because it does a lot of combining of things and it's a nice size. So uh, know that we have there and it's at a really, really good price as well. So that's bunny in a nutshell. Yeah, that's good. Good information. Ron Sauls were joining us. The breed of the week, the bunny this week. Just learned a bit about the bunny and some ways that you can help take care of it. Maybe that's right for you. And in that last topic we're talking about today. Yeah, I guess I went a little long on the bunny. So okay, we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit. We'll longer. talk a little bit about ingredient labels, which are by at best confusing. Um, and when you go on the internet, I see nothing but more confusion by people that I think are well-meaning, but they don't know the bigger picture of things. And so on the internet, I see a lot of things being propagated and they're totally, in some cases, incorrect on how they're reading labels and what does the label mean. I have two labels up that I'm looking at. Uh, right now, I picked up a very popular uh, brand that you'll find at the marts and at the grocery stores. And you can pretty much pick any of those products that they have out there. Look at the ingredient label on that. And then as a second uh, label, I picked uh, Neutro, uh, Natural Choice. And in this case, it's lamb and rice. They're uh, Neutro's Natural Choice lamb and rice product. So I've got those two labels side by side. And I wanted to point out some just th some things, and I think we've got time to talk about the first two ingredients. We can go deeper in the future. When I read uh, the big brand, you know, it's a really great price, and as far as that goes, and all that. First ingredient that I see on there is whole grain corn, um, and so what does that mean? Whole grain corn. It means exactly what we're reading, and it does exactly what it would do in our digestive systems as it does for the dog. Corn, while it has nutrients, is not best in nutrients for neither us nor our dogs. Um, there's good ingredients within it, uh, but there's a lot of stuff that our bodies just doesn't digest very well. The, the outer shell of the corn, for instance, is a pass-through for both of us. Um, there's some uh, germs and things like that. Wheat germs, or no, that would be wheat. Um, there are some internal components to the corn that are digestible and are good. But for the most part, whole grain corn is really not that great of a nutrition for us. The second ingredient that I see on this big box uh, type brand is poultry byproduct meal. And I, there's three components to that that I want to bring out. One is, okay, poultry. That means a bird of some kind. Byproduct, um, that can mean a lot of different things. And it could mean good things and it could be mean bad things or abundance of things that are not all that great. Byproducts can mean uh, hearts, lungs, uh, tracheas, livers, uh, a lot of things that are really good for our dog or cat. So those are good things, uh, but those tend to be more expensive. In this big box brand, remember, we're buying this one based on price. So it could also mean bone, hair, beak, uh, it, uh, uh, nails, you know, all, you know, the 
not the nails that you're hammering into a wood. We're talking nails within the bird, on the bird, on the feet. Uh, those things, while a little bit is okay, because, you know, calcium, hey, bone calcium is really good. But for the most part, those are not very digestible, very low in nutrient. Uh, and your dog doesn't need a lot of those. Uh, just if you watch the, the natural shows, you know, that uh, on TV, what are those wolves eating? Are they eating a lot of the bone? No, that's what's left. They don't eat that stuff. Do they eat a lot of the hair? No, that's sitting on the side. I know it's kind of gross and Sunday morning or like going, Ron, thanks for <laughs> ruining my, my, my Sunday brunch here. Um, so when you are buying those cheaper products out there, realize they're buying the cheaper stuff and they're putting that in there. And so that's the second ingredient on this list we've just talked about the first top two ingredients on this big box type store uh, brand and neither one of them are really good for our dogs i'm not saying they're bad for our dogs but there's just not much nutrients in them the last component i told you it was poultry byproduct we talked about those two meal the meal i'm okay with what meal means is um, you can have wet weight or cooked weight and meal is defining which one you're talking about. If this product just said poultry or poultry byproduct without saying the meal, that's just meaning prior to cooking. That's the ingredient list is ranked in weight uh, prior to cooking. And so poultry byproduct or if poultry just by itself or chicken by itself just means it's before it's cooked we analyzed it and it's here. But if they tack on meal at the end, that means cooked weight. And so meal actually means, hey, I'm getting a lot more for my money because they cooked all the water out that while my dog, you know, that needs it, but that's no longer in it when it's in my bag. And so in this case, they're saying it's the second ingredient within this list um, and it's cooked. But like we said on the front end, poultry and byproduct in a, in a cheap way, I don't think that's the way to go. Are we out of time? Not quite yet. Let's, but let's summarize this thing up then by looking at a, a higher uh, quality brand that's going to cost you more, but it's going to be more nutrients dense. Mm -hmm. uh, first ingredient, lamb meal. Okay, what did we just learn? That it is lamb, which means uh, now they're not saying that byproduct words. Okay, so by, if it's not saying byproduct, it means it has to be muscle or Skin. And so th those two areas are really good nutrient nutrients dense for our dogs or cats. So that's a good thing if they're just saying lamb rather than lamb byproducts. Some byproducts are really, really good. So don't just poop -poo byproducts all together. Uh, but lamb means either muscle or skin, and that's all good. Meal, what did we learn about? That's cooked weight, and it's the number one ingredient. So this Having lamb meal as the first ingredient means they've put a lot of meat into this product. That's a great indication. Uh, the second one, ground rice in this uh, higher quality food. Ground rice is the second ingredient. Rice is much more uh, digestible for us and for our dogs and cats than corn is. Like we saw in that other, the low cost food had whole ground corn. Well, in this case, it's ground rice. Ground rice is a much better product for us and for our dogs and cats because it's much more digestible. We're get, we'll get a lot, of, a lot more carbohydrates out of a grain of rice than we will a kernel corn. So those are just the two first ingredients on a low cost, and we saw low quality there. And then we looked at the uh, higher cost, but wow, did we see quality just skyrocket. Um, as far as what was in it. In real life, when you go to a higher quality food and you pay more for it, uh, you end up feeding half as much. Uh, I always point that out because feel good about paying more for the high quality food because it's a wash in the end. You're going to feed half as much of the high quality food as you would the low quality food. So your dollar for dollar is about even at that point. But now you're feeding them much better food to your dog. All right. Good job, Ron. A good explanation. You could probably visit this again here to, to get more depth. I'm kind of curious about more of those ingredients, too, uh, that are in the higher quality food. And I'll, one last question. If it said lamb as the first product and not lamb meal, would that mean lamb with water? 
Okay, yeah. In this case, it said lamb meal, but you're saying, well, what if it just said lamb? Yeah, what if it just said lamb? Pre cooked weight. Okay. So, what does that mean? Uh, I always think the, the quarter pounder, when we go eat yeah. the quarter pounder, the quarter pounder was a quarter pound before they put it on the grill. Right. After they put it on the grill, it was a smaller burger. Right. It was no longer a quarter. Water. They so, put the waters out of it. So, the fact that it's lamb meal means that that's after it's been cooked. So, that's a lot of and lamb. And it's still at the top of the ingredient list. Right. So that's saying you got even more in that bag. So meal is a good word in ingredient labels. All right, good deal. Ron Salter joining us from Pat Land of Iowa City. Just to learn a little bit about the differences. And that's, again, a lot of us uh, consumers out there don't put a lot of time or thought into this. You just pick up the bag at the store, right? And so it's good to visit that and talk about it. And you have a lot of different brands. That was Nutro. Uh, natural, natural Choice. choice we have there's a whole variety of not 30 different brands. We're bringing in probably a new brand into our store every other week. And you talked about the, the value of, you know, um, the, the dollar as far as the quality of food. You also have the buy 10, get one free. So you factor that in too that you actually get a free bag. Yeah. At some point. So it's 10% off of every bag. And they're already priced competitively in, the, in town here. So it's a really good deal. Good deal. Well, Ron, thanks as always. And we'll talk to you next time around, okay? Thank you very much. That's Ron Sauls. Land of Iowa City, stop by. They open up at noon today on this Sunday. Hope you're having a great day. And if you just tuned in and missed the show, well, just know the podcast is available in its entirety at kxisp.com. To review, we we learned about a long-lost Yorkie, Sam, that was in New Orleans. It was found here in the Cedar Rapids area. Then we also talked a bit about the bunny. Is it right for you? And then you just heard a little bit about food comparisons and ingredients in those foods. Those were the main topics today. More to come here next week on the Positively Potland Show, AM 800 KXIC, Iowa City. Bye.